Look at all. I'm fine. I've got uh, I've got this far and I can't get the picture back. Eh? I know nothing about these things. Can someone see? I've got it, it's recording at the moment. I'll get there.
Booker told everyone. The uh, Parsha of Dvorim uh, always uh, falls on the Shabbat that precedes Tishabov. This year uh, falls on Tishabov, and uh, we uh, put the observance of uh, Tishabov till Sunday, Saturday night and Sunday. So there are uh, many ideas as to the connection between the Parsha of Dvorim and uh, the commemoration of the destruction of the temples. We call the Shabbat Shabbat Chazon because of the Haftorah that we read. But the, uh, it's obvious uh, why uh, the connection between the Haftorah and Tisha B'Av, it's a little less obvious what's the connection with the Parsha. So, uh, I want to develop uh, one or two ideas with you that I hope will give an insight into the entire Chumash Dwar. Dwar is Mishnah Torah. It's a repetition of the Torah by Moshe Rabbeinu. So Mishnah Torah, the fifth book of the Chumash, differs from the other four books. The Gemara even uh, goes so far as to say that there's one opinion that many of the uh, methodologies of Chazal to uh, deduce halachas from the words of the Torah do not apply to Chumash uh, Dvarim. So uh, let's look at Chumash Dvarim. Moshe Rabbeinu's review of the 40 years in the desert. That's basically the Chumash. Why does Moshe do that? Well, you know, the Torah could have ended Parshas Masay. The Torah could have included the mitzvahs of Kitzetzei in Parshas Masay and concluded it there. Why is this addendum necessary? Why is it so important? So uh, there's a tremendously deep lesson here. 
Chumash Dvarim is the memory aid for the Jewish people. Without Chumash Dvarim, the first four Chumashim, so to speak, would have been forgotten. You know how many books there are in the world? The majority of them never being read, never being studied. The fact that there is a recorded memory in writing does not guarantee that that memory will exist within the nation. So Moshe Rabbeinu takes the step of creating a memory aid here. He does so by telling them what happened. Now, there are many alive who remembered what happened. There were people that were over 60. There were people that were under 20. He's speaking to a generation that, so to speak, should be familiar with it. But he does not rely on that. So he tells them what happened. And the truth of the matter is, in national history, it's the oral history of the nation that is as important, if not more important, than the written history. It's the legends, it's the stories that convey all of the events that occurred. Now the legends and the stories may not be exact, but that really doesn't make a difference because we're talking here about developing a national memory. And one of the great tasks that Moshe set for himself was to develop this national memory. We'll read it next week's Parsha. The Nechem, your children will ask you, what is all it is about? What will you answer? So will you answer, well, you know, there's a book in the library written by Rabbi Wein, and if you read it, you'll know everything. Is that going to answer anything? So Moshe has to construct a story for them. The story that's in the mind of the people, in the imagination of the people. And that's the story that will last. And that's the one that will survive and that will carry the Jewish people throughout the ages. So that's one of the great things that this Chumash of Dvorim does for us is that it establishes a medium of national memory. That's what Rashi means that Moshe pointed out all of the places that they stopped and he said, here you were sick and here you did this and here you did that. That's what national memory is built upon. And that's why Chazal said that as long as there's national memory, then every Jew can feel that he or she was at Maimed Arsina. Was it Sinai? But without the establishment of a national memory, there's no way to communicate that. There's no way to make that part of the story. And we see in Tanakh that uh, the destruction of the first temple 
is basically because of the loss of national memory. They forgot, they forgot what it meant to be Jewish. They forgot Egypt, they forgot everything. We read that uh, until the time of Yoshio, there were there was never a Korban Pesach. So there's no Pesach, so then, uh, you know, uh, then how come? And we read in Tanakh about everything else that they forgot. So eventually they forgot their religion, they forgot their God, they forgot everything. They became Kachol Agoyim based Israel. Because if you don't remember Sinai, then Lotirzach, uh, uh, Lotigno has really no meaning to you. You have legalized murder. You have legalized robbery. You have legalized immorality. Which is what happened. And that's what brought about the Churm. So the, uh, the Jewish people can't exist with buildings, you know, right? The Beit HaMikdash, wonderful, but uh, that's not the key. The key is the memory. And that's what Moshe came to insist upon. And that's why, uh, for instance, in the Parsha, uh, the Torah describes for us the bed of Og Melech Habosha. I remarked to, to Henry when we were coming, he mentioned it, that if Og would have lived our time, he could get uh, $50 million a year playing basketball. Nine hours long, four hours wide, and the bed, he weighs so much in it that the bed has to be made out of iron to hold his weight. And the Moshe says that if you want to see the bed, uh, it's in Ramat, uh, Ramat Aman, or today it's Aman, where uh, Jordan is. It's in the museum. So the bed is only valuable as long as the museum is there. There's no museum, you know, can't see the bed of old Melech anywhere anymore. You don't know what happened to it. But the national memory that allows us to retain our idea and vision of who old Melech was and what our encounters with him were. So the national memory has old Melech Aboshan attend the great banquet that Avram Avinu made in honor of his son Yitzchak. And it has old Melech Aboshan survive the flood. So he becomes a certain symbol And the fact that the Jewish people were able to defeat him. So that's the lesson the Torah wants us to understand. But that's a matter again of memory. It's not the memory, not the bed won't do it because we're not, the bed isn't here. So that's a very important lesson from Chumash Dvar is a chumash dvarm is to develop the memory, to keep it alive. And therefore chumash dvarm is different than the other chumashim, because chumash dvarm, so to speak, is the conduit for Torah Shabbat already. It's the entrance to the ability for the oral law to dominate, because the oral law dominates in Jewish life. Everything that we do is based on Torah Shabbat Peh. It's written in Torah Shabbat but we don't understand the word in Torah Shabbat without Torah Shabbat Peh. 
how do I know what 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 a film look like? What it sits? I don't know anything. How do I know what monster looks like? So that's the secret. That's what Moshe is trying to communicate. In. So there's a connection here to, uh, I've, I've always thought about it, uh, the keynote of Tisha B'Av. Like uh, two, three hours worth of poetry. Of uh, eulogies of uh, all sorts of sad things and hopeful things. I imagine that uh, others would have a different way of commemorating national tragedies. In the Western world has, you know, a moment of silence. It's only a moment. Doesn't last. Can't last. The world is a noisy place. So the Jewish genius tried to create a vehicle of memory. How would we remember? Well, you see, in our time, uh, I don't know if we can make any judgments as of yet. It's still uh, uh, too fresh, probably, in historical terms. But uh, the attempt to commemorate the Holocaust has been mainly through uh, museums, books, films, courses in college, lectures. Will that stand the test of time? To a large section of the Jewish people today, uh, the Holocaust is uh, water under the bridge and let's move on. To the rest of the world, it certainly is. Stop it already. How do we, so how, how can you build international memory an event that is so terrible and yet you're supposed to learn something from it and gain inspiration and strength and move ahead. That's a daunting task. And most nations of, uh, I would say even all nations have not been able to accomplish it. Because you wanna commemorate losing. You wanna commemorate defeat. You want to commemorate failure. Uh, so uh, the French do not commemorate Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And we have all the other examples in human history. The Jewish people commemorate defeat. The Jewish people commemorate losing. Which is really part of the secret of the survival of the Jewish people. Because if you can rise from losing, so then you can survive in the world. If the only thing that means anything to you is winning, 
because that's the only method of survival. Eventually, there'll come a time that you can't win or you won't win. So therefore, the Jewish genius uh, created these uh, poems, the keynote, to commemorate not only the destruction of the first temple and the destruction of the second temple, but really, if you think about it, that we, it will commemorate losing. Because in it, we record how great and pious leaders of Israel died an ignominious death. We record uh, how the great holy books of the Jewish people were burned publicly. Uh, we commemorate the uh, desolation of the land and the destruction of what was built. But those are all memory aids to enable us to survive. Chazal uh, in the keynote, uh, there is always a connection to the story of Yosef and his brothers. In other words, the original uh, sin, cardinal problem that really activates all of the troubles of the Jewish people throughout the ages was this dispute between Joseph and his brothers. So the Torah records for us the story of Yosef and his brothers. But it's only in the oral law, in the oral legends regarding Yosef and his brothers that the story takes on life. Otherwise, it's just a story of competition between siblings. And Chazal saw that the story goes on forever. That doesn't end when Joseph is reconciled with his brothers. It's part of our society. It's part of who we are. And therefore, uh, in, in the Kino, for instance, uh, they discussed that uh, Joseph was sold for a room full of shoes. Novi says, because the brothers sold the righteous person, Yosef, for money. And Evion, a helpless person, because of a pair of shoes. So Chazal say, the brothers took the money and they bought shoes with it. Nike. And therefore, 2,000 years later, uh, the symbol of uh, Jewish destruction today is what? What did they show you? A room full of shoes. So that's the memory aid that jogs our memory. So now we can understand why Chazal said that uh, uh, the, the problem and the destruction of the second temple was seen at Chinam, that they hated each other. Where's the prime example of baseless hatred in the Torah? Joseph and his brothers. <coughs> Brothers could not speak nicely to him. And by Yosef, the bosom royal of him. And Yosef spoke to his father negatively about the brothers. So they hated each other. 
That's what destroyed the temples. So if you remember the story of Yosef and his brothers, so then there's hope for the restoration of the temples. We will not uh, put a pair of shoes over the value of a brother. But if there's no memory, so then all of that becomes nebulous, useless, doesn't affect us really. And therefore, in the keynote, like in Chumash Dvarim, uh, there is a great deal of detail told us that we didn't know before. Because now we're developing memory, and memory is developed on little things, on details. I know that I, somebody was cleaning out the apartment of the deceased father. And the uh, child, you know, so part of the problem is uh, that a person accumulates a lot of things. Most of which the person doesn't need, but it's there. And now you got to clean out the apartment. What do you do with it? So there are businesses that clean out the apartment for you. Because they take the onus and the burden away from the children. And uh, then they turn around and sort things and see what they can do. So... Uh, <laughs> Someone who's in that business, who uh, cleans out apartments. So he came to me, he said he's having a dispute with one of the, uh, the client of his, right? To clean out the father's apartment. And the uh, client uh, wants one item back wants him to return one item. And he said, it's impossible for me to return it because I don't know, we sold the part of the stuff, we sold in lots, I, I don't even know where it is. What's my obligation of any? So I said, so why does this person want this one item? He says, this is the item that reminds him of his father that he wants to have. It's not the most expensive item. It's not the rarest item. It's not a collector's item. It's the one that reminds him of his father. And he said, the man is making me nuts. And I, I, I how, you know, what can I do? I offered him money. It's annoying. He has to have the item. because that's the memory aid. If he has the item, then his father is not gone yet. And if he doesn't have the item, so I, I had another experience in the same vein that a person told me that he was uh, disposing of his books in his lifetime. And he offered uh, books, some of his books, to his grandchildren. And he said his greatest disappointment in life was that not one of the grandchildren would take a book. But logically, why should the grandchild take a book? He doesn't need it. Books uh, take up space. He may have the book. He may have a better edition, more modern edition. 
but he doesn't have his grandfather's work. That was a great disappointment. So this entire process of the keynote on Tishabur, and the entire process that we're going to go now until Simchat Torah to hear Chumash Dvorim is only to develop our memory. Is only to have my grandfather's book. Is only somehow to be connected. And if somehow we're successful in that, then that's a big success. The disconnect between generations is the story of what happened to the Jewish people over the past few centuries. And Moshe and the Pythonim who created the keynote really come to address that problem. That's why it says in the Novi that Lifne Bo Yo Mashem Agoro Vanora Beheshiv Leibovo Sabonim Beleibonim Alavosa to remove the disconnect. Make sure the memory aids work. And to give us that sense of belonging which our souls desire and which we try to achieve. So have a wonderful Shabbat and an EV fast. And next Friday, there still will be a class here. Then I'm going away for two weeks and then we'll come back again, God willing. Kol to Shabbat Shalom. What's the title? Memory. Yeah, memory. I'm